Welcome back to Inside the Pack. It was the costliest natural disaster in American history and the third strongest hurricane ever recorded to make landfall in the U.S. Hurricane Katrina displaced more than one million Gulf Coast rest residents, including one duck player and his family. But as Dirk Weishar reports, it's been a blessing in disguise for Darian Weems. It is happening! Oregon is going back to the Rose Bowl! He's had his highs, but he's also had some lows. It kind of hurt me because, you know, I was leaving all my friends behind, uh, you know, essentially leaving a whole life behind, you know, to start something new up. In the city of New Orleans at this hour, 85% is flooded. Oregon offensive tackle Darian Weems is one of the million people displaced by Hurricane Katrina. When it happens and it hits home and it directly affects you, you know, there's, there isn't really words or anything that you could use to describe it, it's, it's, it's just a, a, like a otherworldly feeling, man. Before Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, Weems and his family evacuated to Memphis and then moved to Los Angeles. Weems has never been back to New Orleans. I've never, never seen my home again. But Louisiana's loss is Oregon's gain. It's a blessing in disguise because um, it was for me, you know. You know, through that, I was able to to kind of get out of that and 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 you know that that inner city and and kind of the way that I was living there and you know go to LA, experience some new things, you know, uh, different cultures and 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 I get an opportunity to come here and and play football. Here at Autzen Stadium, Darian Weems plays in front of nearly 60,000 fans every Saturday. As a kid, though, Weems dreamed of playing in front of over 90,000 fans at LSU's Tiger Stadium. That was my team back in the day. It used to hurt me when they when they would lose and and I was a little kid. On September 3rd, Weems will play against LSU at Cowboys Stadium, where the seating capacity can be expanded to seat over 100,000 fans. My mom and, and my family live in Dallas now. You know, that's where they relocated to, so I get to play in front of my family, who I don't really get to play in front of that, mo that often, so. Weems was considered the sixth starter on Oregon's offensive line last season, making seven starts in 2010. He'll be part of a unit that is replacing three starters. It's coming along well, you know. Uh, I mean, I've been here a, a while, played a lot of football. So it's a lot of guys, you know, that I'm kind of helping come along. And it's that human interaction with teammates, friends, and family that brings Weems his highest of highs. For Inside the Pack, I'm Dirk Weishar. Another note, Weems was born on September 11th of 1988, so there's another infamous date for you. Weems often referred to last season as the sixth starter on that offensive line, so the Ducks in pretty decent shape up front when you consider that they, you know, they lost three of five, but really they lost three of six when you figure that Darian Weems into the, into the matter there. And a lot of those guys got a lot of playing time, too. They you know, like to cycle guys in, so I think that the offensive line should be all right. It's the center position that will take the difference there. It's the Carrington Armstrong, Amani Stevens get some chances to go in there, too. Uh, but all in all, Oregon has a lot coming back from such that great season last year where the big thing for them was be able to stay away from those key injuries. Can they do that again this year? Uh, just so much went right for Oregon last year to repeat that. Uh, you know, did the fans get upset? Did you get depressed if you don't make it back to the national title game this year? I think you got to shoot for some, you know, if you go to the Rose Bowl, hey, a couple years ago it was a pretty big deal to go to the Rose Bowl. No question. Still haven't, you saw won, still haven't won the Rose jumping Bowl. Jumping around right there. So, uh, you know, BCS title game is great. It sets the bar that much higher. But I don't think you can be disappointed if you don't make it there every year. Not every team goes consecutively back to back to back. But this team could be better than it was last yeah, year. Yeah, it seems like it could. I mean, uh, when you look at what, is Chip, what Chip Kelly has done, obviously he's stockpiling talent. Now, I guess the question remains, is the NCAA right on his heels? Because it appears that they are with this investigation and the Will Lyle stuff that's going on. And we don't really know when that is going to come down because the NCAA, they kind of work uh, cloak and dagger style on right. these things. You know, they kind of uh, take their time, and it seems at times that they, they put the penalty down maybe when it might hurt the most. It would be nice. It would have been nice for Duck fans to get this thing out of the way about a month ago when everything was really starting to come to a head, and you thought, hey, let's just figure it out before we get into the season. Now you're going to look at, are you going to be an 8-0? Are you going to be a 7-1? and Maybe something happens. You find out there will be no uh, postseason game for you, which means there is no Pac-12 title game for you. So that's all speculation stuff, but you got to remember that that stuff could be coming at some point in time before the end of the year. You know, and it's a good thing we have a lot of time on this show because we could have spent an hour talking about yeah. all this stuff that's off the field rather than football 
then you get into the whole thing with Cliff Harris, Kiko Alonso, and those kinds of things. And Cliff Harris really, as far as, as far as we know right now, he's going to miss at least the opener. I mean, he won the Cal game for them last yeah. year. Let's just be honest Two about point that. Game. Yeah, and he brought that punt return back to the house and ended up uh, sending them to that perfect season in the BCS championship. Now you look at Kiko Alonso, there's another guy that down the road, you know, the attrition starts to kick in when injuries start to happen, you know, as a, as a season goes on, linebackers take a lot of abuse. If Alonzo doesn't come back, I mean, you got to think that at some point these things chip away at the foundation of a team. I think that Kiko does come back, though. I know we've seen it before, the punishments with him, just kind of sit and see what does happen. But I do think that, yeah, they are going to need him because by all recounts, he's one heck of a player, too. So He, he is. And the question is, what do the fans think about that? Right. What, are the, what are the Oregonians that have been following this program for right. years think about that? Chip is it Kelly's right? made it clear, though, he cares about one thing, his football team. Right, and he said that on record before. That's right. Another section of fans That's also right. like that about their coach, that he has all their backs. And you know what? If, if some of it is, is the betterment of the team, which how do you want to look at? What kind of side of the table do you want to sit on? Do you like a player being able to be kept around so you can win? Or do you like the idea of, you know what, let's just do away with it. You've had one, two, three strikes time to move on at some point. Well, let's talk about Oregon State for a little bit here because the Beavers now have just suffered, I mean, a murderer's row as far as the injuries have gone. I mean, Halahuni to me, is one of their best weapons on offense. Ryan Katz is not going to have that security blanket early on in the season. He's going to have to find a way to get it done. Yeah, Colby Prince is your starting tight end for week one, maybe week two. Don't forget the uh, two guys, Connor Hamlet and uh, Tyler Perry. They got the MIPs. They're going to miss one game, maybe not the opener, but at some point in time, they're both going to sit. They were three and four on that tight end depth chart. So, uh, you know, you wonder what happens with Joe Halahuni. They're hoping he comes back for that UCLA game. All right, it's going to take some getting used to, but the Pac-12 should be a really, you know, it should be pretty good this year when you talk about the different things that are going on. So we're going to get to some predictions right now. Let's start with you, Nick. I think to shake things up, like I talked about, think Rose Bowl. Don't think BCS. If BCS happens, that's great, but think Rose Bowl. I'll say the Ducks will go maybe 11-1, 10-2. They will win the first Pac-12 title game, which they will host. I think probably against ASU, and they'll win that Rose Bowl. Return of the Beavers. They missed out in that bowl game for the first time in five years. Let's say they go back, make it a 7-5 record this year, and I say don't get used to it. 12 teams, nice, but soon enough, the Pac-12 will be the Pac-14 by 2014. Maybe the 2016 is always the bigger is better. The name of the game in college athletics right now, so too the conference TV networks. Money, money, money. Okay, first of all, my predictions, the third charm. Hard not to pick Oregon to win the Pac-12 title. The Ducks can get by Stanford on November 12th. Oregon should pick up its third conference title in a row. Beavs go bowling like Nick. I believe the Beavers will not get shut out of the postseason for the second year in a row. In order to go 7-5, and five, they'll have to win a couple of road games, though. Then there were two. Lastly, I think the Pac-12 will once again get two teams into the BCS. Stanford hosts San Jose State, Oregon, Cal, and Notre Dame, and their non-conference road game is Duke. They could go 11-1. and one. This season is a chance for the Pac-12 to really show its strength early in this season. Oregon and LSU, Arizona, Oklahoma State, Washington, Nebraska, Colorado, Ohio State, just to name a few, will forgive the Golden Bears for scheduling Presbyterian. Right, right. Uh, that's a win. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you for watching this preseason edition of Inside the Pack. We'll be here all year on KVAL, also on Comcast, Sportsnet. So long, everybody.